Because I am from Harlem, and you know, I like the fact that Bumpy, Bumpy helped even though he was on the, the wrong side of, of, of the spectrum in relation to the crime world, he did help our people. And he was a guy that stood out in Harlem that would help our people. And his right hand man was Frank Lucas. So, because I'm from Harlem, and Jay's from up top too, so to speak, in um, Jersey. I was like, you know what? You bumpy, and I'm Frank. I got your back. So, truly, I embrace that, because don't get me wrong, even though Frank was a snitch. <laughs> but the bottom line is, you know, that, that closeness, that unity that we have. Waiting for Frank or Kenny was selected and referred by my security team, um, and is an OG from Harlem, um, a good brother. But uh, he was, you know, interviewed uh, and eventually selected because he's a good freaking driver. There was another guy that um, was driving for him. And the other guy did a lateral move. Um, his name was Lamont. And Lamont ended up being uh, one of the sales rep. And I took over the driving position. So I kind of had a little bit of a buffer in the beginning because, you know, I knew Lamont was there. And if I had any questions as to what to do or what not to do, Lamont would be able to give me an update. But, I want to say, in all honesty, when we first started working together, uh, the, the thing is he has temperamental ways that, you know, uh, that was part of the adjustment. Like, if I pull up to a, build, a building, I can't just pull up to the building. I have to pull up in front of the building. So little things like that I had to learn on the fly. And once I learned from now, it's protocol. Um, we get in, have gotten no accidents, no skirt skirts. Um, he, you know, handles his body. Go around me. You cannot, you don't understand? Like, go around? You don't see my hazards and me pulled over. You just thought to sit there. That was going to be your play? Like, nowhere did you think me pulling over and putting the hazards on meant? Anyway, Frank, um, it's funny as hell. That's not why he was picked, though. But he is funny as hell. He started off quiet. So as my driver, you're supposed to, like, as a driver, you're not supposed to be, like, in your boss's business or comment on anything. You're supposed to just be quiet, look ahead, and watch the road. And that's how Frank started, like, his first year. But as we've gotten closer, he now finds himself commentating on everything that I do. Um, he'll wait for the right time. But he and my business a little too much, probably. Um, well, the talk too much is because I'm a communicator, number one. Uh, but when, as I had to learn over the course of driving him, I now know when to shut the heck up. So that's really not an issue anymore, even though it wasn't never a major issue. But, you know, I'd, I'd be in the car by myself for, let's say, hours. And then he'd get in the car. Of course, I want to talk to somebody. The real reason I'm driving is because the opportunity cost to my talent and my time. My gifts, my genius, and my time is better spent running the multiple organizations that I run and spearhead and deals that I underwrite and business that I do. Um, so right now while I'm driving, I'm talking to you, but I cannot answer the emails that are piled up in my email. I can't check off things on my to-do list. I can't wire the $44,000 I have to wire today to one of my business partners um, and a host of other things I can't do because I'm driving right now. I want to be as safe as possible driving, even though I'm driving while holding the phone and insure and talking to you. But I am buckled up. I'm stopping the red light. But the point is that the investment into a driver um, actually I probably quadruple 
my investment and my ROI investing into a driver because of the amount of capacity of work I'm able to do um, and things I'm able to accomplish because I'm not focusing on the road or Atlanta traffic or stop signs or yield signs or slow down, speed limit enforced. I'm not worried about those things. I'm always focused on uh, the next progression of our businesses and things that matter most, even if it's family or whatever else, I'm able to focus. So uh, the opportunity cost of my time and talent is better spent not driving than me driving, no matter how nice the vehicle is. He would be in that mode of he's doing work and business. So the car became, is more or less a sanctuary for him so he can get his work done. Uh, he's trustworthy, uh, funny, and he gets to learn from me too. He really enjoys learning all the stuff that we teach and preach and do and learning about wealth for his family. He has three, he has three children. And so he brings the game that he gets from me in the car with me all day or in the meetings with me. He gets that game and he brings it to his family. So it's pretty dope. I'm in, I'm in class every day. I mean, and then I sit in this car. The thing that's talked about, the business, the quorum, the whole, you know, uh, strategies of how to do this, how to do that. I sit here and hear it all day long. And the education is priceless. Like right now, if I wanted to go out and buy, I know what I'm going to buy immediately. And as I'm sitting in this vehicle, although the information I hear in this vehicle, I can't say anything, but for the most part, I consider this school. And I love it. What's the most annoying thing um, about Jay? Annoying thing about Jay that I would consider, um, well, it's, it's not annoying, but it could be. He could change his mind on the fly. So we could literally be like two minutes from somewhere. He'd be like, you know what, Kenny? Let's do this. And now we go in a whole different direction. So that could be a little bit annoying. I'll be like, oh boy, here we go. So, but again, because I've been sitting in this seat now two years. I'm used to it. It doesn't bother me. But in the beginning, yeah, that used to kind of be irritable.